living in faithful truth. John 8 and 32 says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Power to lift you up, power to set you free. We need a power lift, the truth will set you free. Living in faith for truth, receive the work you need. Power of the gospel ministries, preach the word indeed. We here to help each other, witness the truth and protect each other. So we set aside ourselves so we can reach each other. So let your worship cry, let your praise out. Now let the truth up in you, release that holy shout. Greetings, greetings, the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Reverend Red and Lady Crystal. And yes, guys, I'm back. I know y'all missed me, didn't you? I know you missed me, didn't you? Yeah, you missed me. She over here, she missed me. She's so happy. She's smiling for me. I'm cheek to cheek. Yeah, she missed me. Reverend Red is back. Had to took a little hiatus going on there. Amen. But I'm here. I'm here. We're going to have a great show tonight. Going to be blessed on the night. Going to have another great power lift my boy the batman have another great guest on our show tonight so y'all stay tuned get ready to be blessed get ready to laugh get ready to get some testimonies some good stuff some good news some good information that's going to come out tonight's show so lady k how you been doing you been doing good you know i've been i've been i've been chilling you know i had a revival last night been to houston playing basketball tournaments you know, your you boy just be all over the place, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got to tell Jerry on you. Jerry, she tried to um, put me in what's seclusion. She think I'm sick because I came on sneezing. Uh huh. <laughs> you, 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 you been around all them people, all them places. Yeah, you need to be on quarantine. I'm covered by the blood. You need to be on quarantine. I'm covered by the blood. Quarantine. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Speaking in the name of Jesus, let us pray before we get yes. started, all right? Heavenly Father, we come. We thank you, Father God, for this time. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for our powerless family, Father God. We thank you for our producer, the Batman, Jerry Ross, live, Father God. We thank you for the whole positive family and show, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the positive power 21 cast, Father God. We just thank you for the whole family. We thank you for all our guests that will join in on today, Father God. And we thank you for our guest that's going to be on our show right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that someone will be equipped, someone will be edified, someone will be blessed, Father God, someone will be encouraged right now, Father God, by what they hear on tonight, Father God. So, Father God, I have your way. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. We say amen, amen, and... Amen again! Ah, yes. I am so super excited. We have been busy, definitely have, but if you want to know more about Reverend Red and Lady Crystal, mm -hmm. go to powerofthegospel.org. You are there, you are able to uh, donate if you'd like to continue helping us spread the gospel. You're able to check out the Mighty Kings as well as um, all the things that we are going to be doing in 2023. So go to powerofthegospel.org. And if you're wanting to keep up with Lady K, definitely go to my website, crystalhenry.net. You can get books, online coaching plans, um, and you can also join one of our newest um, groups called the 11th Hour Emergers. It's a mentorship membership. And so if you are interested in emerging in 2023, if you're interested in becoming visible, coming out of darkness, and as well as definitely coming from the backside, the last shall be first from Matthew 20, 1 through 16. So check out the 11th hour emergers.com or go to crystalhenry.net if you want to join this powerful, amazing group in 2023. Don't forget to get Made to Lead Millions Mandate. That's our newest anthology release. That's one of the newest books. I am a visionary and I just got on Author Push. So check out authorpush.com. I made the cover of that magazine, and it's featuring Made to Lead Millions Mandate, the book that was just released. And one more announcement. For those first ladies out there, um, I am one of the co-authors in All the Preacher's Wives. 
all the preacherswives.com. Check out my amaz amazing story and 19 other first ladies. You don't want to miss out on it, as well as my feature story is on audiobook. So go to all the preacherwives.com, look for Team Crystal, and enjoy the amazing stories. So with that being said, those are my announcements, our announcements right here today. And so I ask you, are you ready for our guests? Yes, ma'am. I don't think you're ready. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I don't think you're ready. You know, these, this is my kind of guest. Yes. You know I, I love know that. you love that. I oh. know you love that. So we're focusing on Christian hip hop along oh. with R&B um, and conscious conscience music. Rap King J is famous for his rugged yet inspiring music. In fact, he has even won several awards for being the most inspirational artist. So we want you to definitely check out not only his music, but lean in to the radio show so that you can hear all about his music, his artistry, and some of the amazing things that he has done. He's done numerous shows like McDonald's Gospel Feast, at the Prudential Center in New Jersey. He's performed in front of almost 17,000 people. He is electrifying. He's also open for amazing artists like Fantasia, Eric Campbell, Erica Campbell, Israel Holton, and Donnie McClurkin. So you definitely want to hear some of those stories and all about rap. King J. So welcome to Power Lift. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Amen, amen, amen. I was just, God bless. How you doing, man? You all right? Yeah, man, I'm well. God is good. You know, it's a blessing God. to be on the show. All the time. God is good, man. I'm so glad to have, you know, I, I that my wife was to tell, you know, I love gospel rap artists i love hip-hop gospel because that's what that's what got me interested in 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 the church and being saved you know when i first heard gospel rap kirk franklin back in the days when i first got saved i was like oh yeah. oh we can do they oh they can do this in the church okay i'm down uh -huh. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah because glory glory huh? that just didn't get me you know it just in the movement so we got to use what's going to attract that's going to touch people you know, and that's what I'm saying. That's what touched me. And it always, it, it, I see the battle that y'all go through when it comes to being hip hop or a gospel rapper, because people have their mindset on the beat and what it, you know, um, means in the worldly, what they use it for, for the worldly um, uh, promotion, you know. But when you yeah. use the lyrics to glorify God, amen, that's what I listen to. How you glorify God, or you keep me bumping my head with a beat. And I can go down the street. People think I'm jamming to, to secular rap, but I'm I'm jamming to some some godly music. So I just want to um, start with you and say, let's go back to your childhood. How did this start? I mean, in high school, in grade school, when did you figure out you could throw some bars together? You know, when did you figure that out? I mean, you know, uh, <clears throat> basically, you know, coming up young, um, as we all know, and I'm, you know, I came up in the '80s. Okay. So music was a, a, a music was a way to um, basically, you know, get through, um, you know, basically the life that you know was was basically the 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 the, the cards that was dealt to us. So it was it was extracurricular, and you know, throughout years, you know, you just do the beatbox and you do the dancing. Right. Oh yeah, I know, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you you know you got your inspirations, those who you listen to by you know subconsciously. You're you're embodying their music without even knowing. You're learning how to, you know, basically, if you are going to start rapping, you're going to sound like whoever you like to listen to. Exactly. Um, and so um, as I got like, a, I mean, I wrote some stuff when I was like eight because my pops is, um, he was in a hip hop group and he okay. met my mom by way of a hip hop group, um, dance group, um, traveling and he DJ, oh, he traveled for Okay. You got yeah, it by the bloodline yeah. then, huh? You passed out through the bloodline, huh? The rap the rap game, huh? I mean, you know, it, it is what it is, you know, a lot that's how we get a lot of what we what we have, but you know, so and my mom was she likes to dance, but he met her, he's from New York. He met her in in, in Connecticut and uh there I go, you know what I'm saying? So I met him 
when I was about eight years old after, you know, living a rough life or whatever through just sitting, going through that crack up with with my mom and her being delivered now and saved to God be the glory. Um, mm-hmm. But it was, it was an area that I think everybody's family got hit in the black community. Right, right. And so, you know, I met my pops and I found out he had DJ equipment. So I was rapping in the basement and just not writing, but just rapping, just saying like, okay. you know what, I'm confident. I'm just going to just make up bars. And so, but well, until I got 19, I didn't start writing until I was 19. And then I didn't get serious about it until I got later on okay. in my life, like in my, uh, my mid twenties. And then, you know, from there it was, it was worldly and it was, it was what it was. But then, you know, when I came to, you know, and I was raised in church after uh, my mom got saved, she ended up, you know, going to church. And, but then I started acting up and um, yeah, eventually okay. I came, I came around and then um, I found out, okay, I'm like, dang, I got this stain of the world on me and I'm in church and people could tell that I wasn't raised in church, like, or at least I wasn't one of those obedient ones. And so it kind of made me feel out of pocket. And so music, the rap music that I found out that I was able to do and bring that gift with me, it kind of opened doors and, and gave me a purpose at that point. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I just want to let you know, I've all, I'm already loving you, God. Man. I'm going to tell you why, because I like someone that's transparent, you know, to say, no, I didn't work. I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't good all my life. I had to make that transition because it's all about that transition from living a life of sin of out there worldly to coming to Christ. Amen. Because I was a book of I was a book of beer back in the 80s and the 70s. <laughs> and the, yeah. You know, the, the early 90s, you know, so. I know we know what God can do, and I love the fact that. So, so here's what I want to ask you now: What made you before I give my oh, my wife? Y'all looking at me crazy when I ask a second question, you know? So if I if you hear a slap, King J, you, that's because okay. she done popped me aside. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm praying for you. Yeah, pray for me, bro. Okay, like just hear a quick slap, and I just they ain't saying nothing. Just know what happened. But yeah. let me ask you something. At what point or what incident, or do you have a testimony that made you like transition from the secular rap world, you know, into like, you know, this happening or this incident or this date that I want to just glorify God with these lyrics? Now I got these bars. I have this gift. Tell us that that transition. Well, it started from, like I said, my mom being raised in church and me feeling like, you know, I had to go a lot of the times. And she just went from zero to 100. She went from being an extreme, you know, drug addict to being an extreme Christian. And there was no transitional spot. And then it was no, it mm. felt like she understood that, you know, how dangerous it was. But I didn't get the chance to get that experience. So I just got the harsh, you know, uh, Christian, you know, discipline constantly. Like, you know, she feared for me to go that way so bad that it was a turnoff for me. Like church seemed like, like it was no fun because it was just like the way she was making it, like, you know what I mean? So hard and strict. And I understand that was love today, but you know, it still left me in a place where you like, you know, you know, it's, I need that Liberty to be able to experience this for myself. Even I've seen, even though I've seen what it did for her, I always felt like, you know what, I'm not going to go that far. I'm right, just going right. to go ahead and, and, and do live the, you know, the weed and the drinking or whatever and, and, and chill and, always keep myself up. And then, you know, you know, I got some stains from living in that world that kind of stuck with me. And, um, you know, now when I go to try to get into the church, you know, it was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I remember who the Lord is from my mom and how she got saved. Once I got, and this is at the point where I got in so deep, I'm like, dang, you know what? I got to go back to what I know, what I know pulled my mom's out. And that was the Lord. You know, you raise a child and raise you old and he's always not the part. There you go. So, yep. That's what happened. I ended up like, you know what, let me call on the Lord. So I start calling on the Lord and, you know, after, you know, out of all of my sin and then, you know, I had the music there, but it was, I knew the truth. And so I couldn't sin in peace. And so I had to get my way back. And so oh, I came man. back with a stain. I came back with a stain and was like, now I got to, I don't fit in the world. And now I got to prove myself to the church. And so I right. got into this place where I was by myself. You know, and I was just like, you know what, Lord, I need, I need to get some type of worth. Like, I don't feel like they see any value in me coming from the world. And it seemed like I got to prove myself. And God was just, he opened that door in my heart and said, listen, it was a chamber of my heart where music was that I loved. And he said, just take, you love this, take this and bring this to the altar. And I'm going right. I'm 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 to I'm 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 set fire to it. I'm going to set fire Amen. to it and purify it. And you're going to do it for me. Amen. And when I started doing that, I was in a community doing it at first, and then I just started here having all type of pastors and leaders connected with me, like, yo, we need you in our church. 
You know, you could touch the youth. You could minister to the men because you know I do. The, I'm a pastor now at this point, and um, I'm over the men's ministry. I'm at Calvary Temple Christian Center uh, in, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. My bishop is Bishop John R. Thompson. Man, he's uh, you know, he's uh, his his overseer. His um uh, his overseer is uh, uh Bishop Noel Jones, and um uh, you know so I got a, I got ended up into a rich lineage of you know Bible teaching, sound doctrine. And so that I'm able to put that into the music and, and break Amen. some jokes, you know, with the, with the anointing that's on my life. But yeah, that's what that's what got Amen. me into it. Like you know, it's good. the music that's what got me in the end. I love that journey. I love that journey. Okay, Lady K, here you go. You can you can have him for a couple of questions. Okay, mm. make it quick. Okay. Really? <laughs> 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 so let us know um, what your first the first song, the your first breakthrough. What was um, the name of it? And why'd you write it? It was, it was, and the funny thing was, when I started to write Christian music, I was married at the time um, to my first, uh, my other wife, you know, my ex-wife, and um, we was we was together in the church, and and I didn't have any, you know, I just I said I heard somebody that did Christian rap, and I listened to old other Christian rappers, and I'm like, Christian rap is gonna be corny, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't no way I could do this and make this sound high, and I heard a couple people that sound good, and I was like. I won't quite do it like that, but I'll do it like, I guess, the way that I would want to hear it. And that's where but the inspiration from all of the years of me listening to the hip hop that I was listening to. And I ended up coming out sounding like the person, people I was inspired or I was, that I listened to back then as far as sound sonically. And I said, yeah, yeah, okay. And um, it wasn't purposeful. It was just me trying to do something that I would want to hear. And um, I was doing it at the house and stuff like that. But then we got and I was recording it myself and everything and just putting it on Facebook, sharing my ministry that way. And um, I was remixing on worldly songs and taking the tracks and remixing them. And that's how I, um, you know, got in contact with different people. And then um, when I actually recorded my own song, it was in a low place. You know what I mean? I had, I got, began the divorce uh, process with my ex. My kids wasn't there. I'm in the same house with all the furniture. And it was just like, me having visions of me seeing my kids there and then it's like mirages and then they're not there. And so I was in a low place. I, I got back, I started using alcohol heavy, but I just, I said, I'm not going to leave this gift alone. And I wrote the song victory. And uh, it seemed like I realized that at that point that it, my music was prophetic and every, and I know that even now, whatever I rap about manifests. It's just like that. And it ain't no way to it ain't no way to sugarcoat it, it ain't no way to say anything about it. And I believe that God gave me a gift in that way because those those are the type of gifts that he don't place in anybody's hands because power in the wrong hands will is, is will cause, you know, wicked devices and evil. And so I thank God for the condition of my heart because I don't play around with this music and when I write it, it you, I'm I'm expecting it to manifest and I'm gonna be one of the ones that God uses to be, you know, uh instrumental in it happening by his by his grace. And mercy, you know, and you know, to be to be able to, you know, help win some souls. So I, I really take it serious, and I like to have fun with it too. Amen. I I love the definiteness in your voice. Like you know, I am this. I'm prophetic. This is what he did, and I love yeah. that because that's very powerful. Because sometimes when you're dealing with the prophetic. Um, People will be like, no, that ain't what happened. Oh, no, you, you know, you're wrong. They'll try to point you in a different direction. But I love yeah. the fact that you are clear and definite. And like, nah. no, this is from God. So nah, that's... No, 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 no. Because even with Samuel, the Bible says that none of his words touch the ground. Mm -hmm. And so when I started doing this music from the heart, I mm -hmm. realized, I realized that it was it was inspired by God because none of those words hit the ground and they man they're manifesting back to back and like throughout the years it's, it's I could play every song for every part of my Christian walk since mm -hmm. I've been writing the music and it lines right up. Amen. And I wrote, Amen. I wrote it before. <laughs> okay. See, that's good. That's good. That's excellent. Powerful. So let me ask you this, uh, King J. How yeah. How how um how hard was the struggle? And when I say the struggle, it's because you know in the secular world when it comes to music and hip hop and rapping, that's where the money is. That's where you get paid, you know. That's where you want to get signed and want to be there. How how hard was the struggle to either stay over there in the secular rap side and come uh, or go over to the gospel? 
side of, of rapping. How, how, tell us about that. Well, you know, um, there's really there's really, really no struggle when there when 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 your heart is where where it needs to be. Mm. It's it's like okay. it's like telling me to betray my mother at the okay. point. And I knew who exactly. God was. And, okay. And my father. That's I'm like, good. I'm not going over there for y'all. That's Are you good. Kidding me? That's you good. know what I'm saying? And so yeah, yeah. that was a whole rap. They, ABC Radio offered two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They had it all set up, and and they said, listen, you know, we we could do the music. And then there was other guys down in, uh, down in Atlanta with uh, I think he was like uh, I don't want to say his name. I don't want to put names out there, but he was like, you know, I don't have, I don't have, you know, I'm not really connected with people that do this. But if you could just, if you don't say Jesus and you don't say that, then mm. you could probably push it. And so it was, it was definitely, it was there and it wasn't no question. Like, I'm like, no, because my whole thing behind the ministry was I, I didn't want people, I didn't want to be one of those people that was just doing rap because they couldn't make it in the secular world. And it was trying to mask the gospel. And, and it's okay to use you little know, metaphors and all of that, but I wanted to have scripture because it, the, the Lord's word is what's going to manifest. You know what I mean? And so, That's true. That was yes, no question sir. for me. I was like, you know, I see the devil. It was a face to face on a mountaintop. Yes, sir. Okay. I love it, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. <nah. laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it. I, I love it. Like my wife said, I see the same thing. And when you speak and you're definite, you know what you're saying. You're not shaking. And that's what preacher should be. A preacher shouldn't be, yeah. be, you know, and even when you, if you listen to, you know, when you listen to Tupac and all them, they wasn't joking yeah. with their lyrics. What yeah. they said, yeah. you wasn't changing. I'm, I'm sharing this because I didn't experience it and lived it. And what you do with your rap is because I, I didn't experience the power of the Holy Ghost. I didn't experience the Lord. Yeah. And you can't move me from that. Out of you the know. abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, and I and I definitely love that, man. Now, I want to ask you this now. As you was growing up, did you have uh, an, an idol or someone that you looked up to or someone that's kind of like you kind of trying to drop your balls like as you was growing up? Well, I, it started what well, the thing was, yeah, with the bars, it was just for me, it was East Coast music, East Coast rap. So it would, it would run from anyway from Rob Kim. To Big Daddy mm-hmm. Kane, mm-hmm. Um, LL. Yeah, you lose some Kane folks now. You know he not. You lose some folks now. Our young audience, they don't know about what you just said. Them, them three names. <laughs> yeah, and then then it came up to Rock Him and uh, no, yeah. uh, Ray- Raekwon and Nas and Black Thought. So, and these okay. are all I, I felt like rappers that was, and I like Tupac because Tupac, his passion was all over the music, you know what I mean? Whatever right, right. his agenda was, he was clear about it, you know what I'm saying? And I like that about him. And so, um, but but my inspiration as as a man, I had always, and it's funny, Martin Luther King just passed uh, his birthday, and uh, that was one of the people um, that I looked to, because, you know, coming up without a father, you had to kind of look at different men and kind of put a, a, a role model together. So it was Mike Tyson, Michael Jordan, you know, you had you had Michael Jackson back then, yep, yep. and this was just a different thing. It was like a smorgasbord of people that you looked up to to kind of use to, to charge you in different areas of your life. And then uh, my stepfather, he, you know, we he always watched uh, G. E. Patterson and Fred Price, so right, God right. was already planting seeds back then. I love G. E. Patterson, man. He's solid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. Now, when it comes to um, to because I think I don't know if you said you had a in a struggle. Most of the rap people that we talk to or interview on our podcast, they will tell you the tell us the difficulty they had bringing the rap into the church. And I, I, I you know, it sounds like you didn't have a problem. People were inviting you to come in because nah. there's some church they look at that and frown at it. Don't want that in there. It's hip hop. We don't want it in our in our praise or whatever. Have you had any difficulty with that? I mean, you you see the eyes from the elder elders. You know what I'm saying? They looking like, boy, you if this ain't right, it ain't gonna be. You know what I mean? They give you that look, but that's why, and that's another reason why it, it was important for the scriptures to be there. So, and for me to speak with clear and clarity and diction, so they understood that yes. this is authority that we're dealing with, right? Rap is an authoritative genre, and and when we're dealing with the devil, we got to speak with authority. It's, and worship yep. and praises unto the Lord. And, and, but when we talk about the, going to war with the devil, a worship and praise is going to strengthen our soul and our heart with God, mm-hmm. and, and that's going to by default give us give us strength. But when we want to target the devil, rap is one of those things where we ain't dissing each other. We're going for the Lord. We're going to a demon bully. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what it is. 
mm-hmm. taken back what the devil stole. Amen. Amen. And when it comes to the church, they didn't really, no really, men, I find the men found that I brought a masculinity to the church that was kind of hard for people to, um, kind of hard for, because, you know, as, as men in the church, we're, we're, we're called to be peaceful, loving, and caring, and gentle, and providing in, in a sense that, you know, there's no threat from us. But that rap came in with a, a way to say, listen, we're going to be like this with our with our church members and with one another. But when it comes to the devil, we're going to get hardcore with him. And that's what this is going to be. Right. You know what I mean? And, and we need to know that we got authoritative people. I'm talking about healing from, from cancer, AIDS, whatever it is. I'm believing right, God right. to do it. God has used me and had me involved with it. You know what I'm saying? I give him all the glory and the praise. And and any time that, that it, I don't care who it hit, it could be my mother. When she had cancer, we prayed up up out of there. That was a wrap. I and mean, that, that's it. She ain't got it no more. That's, that's just how it is. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to allow the devil to come in and try to bully somebody that God gave you the victory over you. You are a defeated foe. You've been defeated from, from day one. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it ain't no loop for me to be entertaining him and I'm being fearful of him. If anything, it, 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 anything that I had doubts that I have, it's in me being, you know, worthy of God, even using me to be a part of any of that. That's Amen. The only thing that I fight with. Amen. Amen. Man, that's that's amazing, man. I think, I'm, I, like I said, I love your authority that you speak with. Now, let me ask you this. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, My wife know. looking at me. Okay, let me get one more question. Okay, let me get. Okay, you want to get me? You want <laughs> get me in trouble, King J? You can get me in trouble now. <laughs> of, 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 of all. <laughs> Of all the, the all this that you have worked with, I see. Tell my girl Fantasia that Red said hello. She yeah. ain't gonna know. She ain't gonna know who you're talking about. But just tell her Red said hello. Okay. Yeah. But of all yeah. the stars you have worked with, I got two part question. I got to sneak these two questions yeah, in. Two part question. Who's your favorite person that you have worked with so far? And the second part of the question, is there one artist that you would like to work with? Female, male, a male? A duet or something with those two two part questions right there. The favorite so far well, that you have worked with and who you would like to work with for your career. Well, a lot, a lot of the people that are on my bio, those were those uh, were acquaintances through, you know, um, being at the same shows. But you know, if I had to say anybody that was, um, I, I got a chance to chill out and hang and talk to Donnie McCurkin. I think Bishop. Uh, uh, Milton was there too. Uh, Morton, he was there. It was me, Bishop Morton, and um, Donnie McCurkin. We had about we was all hanging out for about forty five minutes, chopping okay. it up. And, um, and and you know, but Donnie McCurkin, you know, prophesied in my life about you know just being a uh, business oriented, and you know, concerning all my dealings. And he uh, just encouraged me in the music to say, wherever you want to take this, you could take it because. You have the anointing on your life, you know, and he knows the anointing. And, um, um, and he said, you know, if anything you ever wanted to do, you could do it. And a lot of the things that um, that I've done, it was based off believing the word of the prophet. And and so I would say Donnie McKirkland, um in both cases. And if, okay. if I could work with him, I would, I would want to have him there because, you know, whenever the church is going forward, it, we always have to remember the foundations and to bring, keep the elders in, in position and, and allow them to continually be able to correct us as we go because we need that foundational um that dynamic you know what i mean mm-hmm. amen mm-hmm. amen amen that's good okay, okay. hold on let me let me pass the phone mm-hmm. i seen a hand rearing back right so. it was it was it was <laughs> so i have a question for you my question is um wh- i understand my husband and i we both have been divorced and so we're yeah. on we are on our second marriage. Um yeah. did you have anyone try to stop your ministry because of your divorce? Well, um, it wasn't public like that, so it wasn't mm-hmm. really an issue. And I'm I'm currently married now and, and me and mm-hmm. my wife we do uh we do we're working on they we've been placed ahead of the marriage ministry. We actually both passed. Oh, excellent. Mm-hmm. And we, we're ahead of the the yeah, and so I'm not you know I under, once once you know who God is and you know mm-hmm. the rules you read in the Word man you look at pe- people know like yes. people know when you know you know what I'm saying and and they'll make sure they walk on eggshells because you know you, you knowing the, the Word of God the eyes are the windows to the soul when you look at me you know I know who God is and I know okay. when you know when you about to say something that ain't right you know I'm gonna know it's not right. <laughs> Amen. Excellent, excellent. So where 
has uh where's the furthest place or the most amazing place that you have had the opportunity to perform in well it was, uh, the Prudential center was nice in jersey it was it was a lot of people there and the, the ironic thing about it is that it's the new jersey devil stadium you know what i'm saying mm, so wow being in there ministering and, and the new jersey, new jersey devils are a hockey team right mm. right but still the and name so, <laughs> so when I went there, I'm like, listen, we had we up in here representing God. We shut it down. We we stomped all over the devil's territory that day. So I gotta <laughs> yeah. say, I gotta say, yeah, I gotta say that's where it, where it was. We was two stepping like a weapon up in there. Okay, for sure. <laughs> I love for that. Sure. I love that. But that that's another point of overcoming and just yeah. The, when God shows you that even though it might be named one thing. Is all about overcoming in another area. So I love that. Yeah. That's amazing. So now, what's what is new on the horizon? What is your next? This is 2023. What do you plan on? What what do you have going on this year? Well, like I said before, when it comes down to music, it's always a byproduct of ministry for me. You know, and if it's not happening now, it's it's prophetically being ministered through the music because I want it to happen. And so every time you play it, you plan the prophecy. Every time you play it, you plan the vision. Every time you plan, you plan it right into to, to, to manifestation. And so that's why I'm mindful when I speak. Um, I'm coming out with a song called Walking Heavy, and it's just it's just that. You know what I'm saying? When you trust words, what God's word, you don't tip around. You don't tiptoe around nothing mm-hmm. when it concerning you know what God said about mm-hmm. that situation. You walk heavy on it. You put both feet down, and you, you even get to the point where you're walking so heavy, people are going to think you're going to leave footprints in the ground. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's right, right. I'm at with the ministry when it comes down to going to churches and being sure of the gift that God has given me and being sure that I'm called to come in and contribute to whatever's happening here, to share my gift, to, to take partake in your gift, and for us to exchange and be equally ed- or be edified as a body and to grow in anything that is not of God is going to be consumed by the fire of God in the mix of the saints as we get together and we lift him up and we give him glory and we, and we, we give him praise. You know what I'm saying? Yes, the healing is yes. going to definitely take place, set the atmosphere and fill the, the temple with glory. You know, and so that's what walking heavy is about. You know, I'm talking about in the streets. I make church right in the middle of a street and right in the middle of a park on a park uh-huh. bench anywhere. You know what I mean? I'm I'm setting up an altar. Amen. Amen. That's amazing. That's that's amazing. Now let me ask you this, um, King J, can you um can you sing too? Or do you just have the can you just rap? Do you know the funny thing about it? Um I was in um <laughs> I was in I was in um it was this woman um, in, in, in um, ninth grade. Her name was Miss Smith, and she had those. She was an older black woman, and she had really big curly hair like those women that sung in the '60s. And she, but she was a gospel um, singer, and she but she was teaching gospel at the school. And so she swarping down that I could sing, and she pushed yeah. me to sing forever. And so I did get ended up singing, and and you know I sang at the school during the assembly. I was supposed to come back for um, six o'clock for the parents and stuff, but I didn't come. And I sang, and you know, I didn't know if I was good or not. I just I went off of what she told me. I sang, you know, um, and then everybody came and was like, "Oh, yeah, I didn't know you could sing. Let me find out. You go." And I'm like, "You serious?" So I realized that I can sing songs that are patented for my voice. Right. And, okay. I, and, and so, and if I I can definitely write songs. And I can give you how it's supposed to sound, and and I've found out that it has worked out pretty good with with people when I I give them the melody, and then they sing it. But it, for me, I'm not with, with no whole song singing dude. I could probably pull a hook off though. <laughs> okay, I got with some, you. With some anointing, I'm gonna set that hook on fire with all the anointing and the gifts I got. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So when you when you preached your first sermon what was the difference between ministering through rapping and ministering the word was there a difference well the rap as i said before the raps oh i always put the word in the raps mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so what i what i found out was i got to them I, I finished the message quicker when i rapped it than, than when i preached it Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And I had a pastor come up to me. He said, "Man, I admire what you do. 
it take me 45 minutes to get to get the message across that you get done in three minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah. and so only difference is, is there's a, there's a teaching element in, that's involved where you're looking for uh, the response of the listeners. And like Jeremiah, you know, said, like God said to Jeremiah, don't look at their faces because when people, you minister to people, they, their eyes, their face, their countenance will let you know if they're receiving you or if they're not right, receiving right, right. you. And you, you know, as you're ministering, and you're trying to get the message to them so we can go ahead and preach this thing and, and shout about it. I need you to first understand what you're shouting about. So I got to break it down a little bit and look for some head nods. And I, I, can, I don't want to call nobody slow, but you can look who, who will probably be, you could, God will show you who, if this person is getting it, everybody else is getting it. Right, right, right. It's always that one person that you look at and be like, if I can get them to nod on this, this, this point right here, and, 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 you know, edge them on to see if they're feeling it. Then you get to where they need to be. I can go to the next one, and then we can, we can come conclude this, and then I can go ahead and, pre and preach and give that quick five-minute, you know, pep talk to get us out of here to get us out of here to go ahead and live this thing out now. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Awesome. Now, uh, King Jay, here's what we're going to do before you leave tonight. We're going to give you an opportunity to share your website, how to get your music, how to get in contact with you, whatever you have coming up, tour, dates, whatever you're doing, we're gonna, you're going to take uh, that time to share it with our listening audience, okay? And if you want to, yeah. shout out, want to shout out to your music group or whoever your producer, you already shout out to your, your pastor, your bishop, or your church, you know, and your wife, you know, you're going to have that opportunity to yeah, whatever yeah. time you need to, to definitely uh, share that and, and do that. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to Dallas, Dallas, Texas? I haven't been to Dallas. My ex-wife just moved to Dallas, moved to Houston with my kids, and I just got off the floor with them not too long ago. But no, I haven't. Not just yet. Okay, okay. Now, when you tour, do you have you do you tour yet? Have you started touring or? Um, when when I started doing the music, and when I do tour, it's more I really uh because I'm 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 so uh intentional. I target my areas, my closest areas, areas that I can get to and really almost like disciple, you know what I'm saying? You got you, got Because you, got you. I can kind of drill those areas. And then it's almost like how Paul operated with the churches. You know, when he, he, he didn't travel, he traveled to different places and he traveled along. But I like to be where I, you know, the East Coast is a very hard place to minister. It's very tough up here in Connecticut and New York, the tri-state areas are very, the Massachusetts as well. They're very stubborn. And this is like the, the foundation, or this is where Satan planted his foundations at. So, and you know, right. even out here in the Connecticut River, they pour, they pour, the witches gather on the beach early in the mornings at times. Wow. Because we had a woman, that was a witch, that told her testimony in one of our gatherings called Holy Smoke. And she said the witches, they go out right in the Connecticut River, and they pour oil and stuff into the river. So I've been focusing in this area. I'm not opposed to traveling, though. You know, I just, right, I've right. just been so intentional here, and I'm planning on messing around with um, CMG and my, my good brother Dwayne, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, in the squad, 2911. He, you know, he's pulling on me to, um, to venture out more, and so I'm um, definitely looking to do some more traveling. But uh, I don't, I'm not opposed to it. I just want to make sure that my house is in order, that my wife That's is not. True. That's true. That's affect my home, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, being being a guy, you know, I remember um, my stepfather was a, a a man that was promiscuous with women, and, and you know, and he he pretty much put a lot of that in me. And so, you know, you, it's like when I came to the Lord, everything that I thought was a man, or when I came to the understanding of being a man in the Lord, it was everything almost opposite of what I would thought was a man. So, mm -hmm. I had some mannerisms that you know that my wife feels sometimes she had felt before, and when he, anyway. She was a little uncomfortable. She was like, no, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> Traveling nowhere. Being in nobody's hotel without me. <laughs> I was about to get one of them slaps you be getting. Down, huh? Yeah, I was about to get one of them slaps you be, one of them slaps you be getting. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was the only one, Doc. I see, okay. Uh -uh. <laughs> the women the, the women really believe that they are anointed to lay hands on us any time they get ready. I'm we are. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay, right, right. Um, King Jay, I want you. I want you to share before you go into sharing all the stuff that I told you we're gonna have the opportunity to share. Share, share um, with our our audience the Christhood Outreach, the Christhood Outreach the organization that you have. 
Um, Christ Hood Outreach uh, is an um, outreach ministry, and it's multifaceted. Um, it's designed to infiltrate all areas of a community um, by way of outreach and also by way of fellowship with other churches. So it serves as an outhouse outreach program for churches that don't have outreach. Mm-hmm. And so, okay. damn, you, you go to that church, you go to that church, you go to that church, Your ch- our churches don't have outreach, but together we are an outreach church because we, we mm-hmm. acknowledge the kingdom as one. Mm-hmm. And right. so what we try to do is we try to facilitate area use. Uh, areas like community centers that that are like transition and make them transitional churches where it's a it's a mutual ground neutral ground for people to come in and and receive comfortably and so they're actually ready to step into a church. That's and we good. work on feed, work on feeding yep. people, you know, clothing and, and then whatever resources we can get our hands on, so that we can show our love in a in a, in a natural way to let them know that. You know, we know that love is an action. We know you have needs. And the Bible is very clear, and God, Jesus himself, is clear on uh, making us, un- helping us to understand that when we do these things, we're doing it as unto him. Amen. It Amen. encourages us in our living. Okay, praise the Lord, man. Okay, now, um, um, King, go ahead and share with um, the listening audience how to get your records, how to listen to your website. Your, your schedule, what you have coming up, what you want to invite people to shout out to whoever you want to shout out to your kids, or wife, wherever. Go ahead. You got that time to do that now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to shout out my wife, Alicia Person, uh, Pastor Alicia Person. Um, uh, shout out my kids, uh, Kaylee, Jason, Sarah, my mother, Vanetta, um, you know, my pops, Jeffrey Scott Andrews. Uh, Who's also a, a, he's a, a, a elder, a reverend now? My mom's an evangelist. Um, shout out to my bishop, uh, Bishop John R. Thompson, and his wife, co-pastor uh, Janice R. Th- uh, co-pastor Denise R. Thompson. Um, you know Calvary Temple Church. All, you know all of the members. Um, I also like to shout out uh, 2911 CMG, the squad. Um, definitely uh, my allies, and I'm definitely heavily affiliated with them. Me and um, Dwayne have known each other for a long time. Uh, that's the current. We've known um, we've known each other for a while. He's, he's always been, you know, he's, he's one of those relentless guys that I need because one thing about me, and I think, and then I think it's a lot about prophetic people. We have a tendency to isolate sometimes, and so he right. gets me out of that. He gets me out of that, and so I thank God for him. And I, but the thing is, I love people when I'm around them. I'm going, I'm coming there to shake it and move it. That's for sure. And you know, what I mean, it ain't like. I can't get down with, with, with the fellowship when I'm there, but it's easy for me to slip into just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that that sometimes. But uh, shout outs uh, to all of those people, and also if anybody wanted to contact with me, uh, Rap King J, uh, G, uh, 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 on Instagram, you go there. That's pretty much a central that'll probably lead you to my Facebook and everything else. So just go to Instagram at Rap King J, and um, you'll see pictures and anything that comes up new. Um, it's going to be shared there. I'm at I'm at a point now where I'm just starting um, starting to redo some things, some music and stuff. So a, a lot of the music that was done with the old label that I was with, which was GMG God's Music Group, I always represent um, GMG. Uh, but I, um, unfortunately, me and the individual who came together on that are not currently working together, and so I restarted everything, and that's where uh, 2911. Um, CMG squad uh, with my brother the, the Corinth, we came together to make some things happen. So we, we are bringing a brink of newness and a new year. So, you know, 2911 uh, CMG the squad, and those are my, you know, those are my road dogs right now. And they're going to always be uh, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, go to uh, Rock King J on Instagram. Okay. That's it. This is as easy as can be. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. And, and whenever new comes up, it's gonna go. It's gonna. It's gonna pass through there. So if you go to go to Rap King J on Instagram and lot and and, and 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 follow me, boom, you'll you'll be following everything because I'll put links inside of the uh, the, uh, the the top part and you know I'll keep everybody connected. Amen. I have a question for you. Did you tell all the ministries that you are over? Uh, as far as what? Your, like, oh yeah, yeah. I cheered. I cheered. Uh, I, I had got the. Uh, I had got the information. I knew I was going to be interviewed, 
Mm-hmm. But I got the information as far as the flyer part. I didn't mm-hmm. get that immediately. So hopefully, I know my bishop shared it. On okay, his page, good. Uh, after we share it, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure you I- shout it out and got all your ministries because somebody might want to hear not only you rap, but hear the word of God through you. So, yeah, um, yeah. and they might want to invite you to come to their church. So I want to make sure that, because um, you said you were over the, the marriage ministry, the men's the ministry. ministry. Yes, yes. So we just want to make sure that people know what you're, what God has anointed you to do. So praise yes. God for that. Now, this is 2023. We're 19 days in. So can you give us um, just a little snippet of what God, the word that God has given to you for 2023? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me to freestyle. No, that's for you. Oh. <laughs> okay. For, for, 20, for 2023, um, 2323 is a definite, a definite choice, uh, to put God first in our lives. It's a, it's a God first time. If mm-hmm. God has never been first in your life, meaning you let everything else stop you from doing the will of God, you let everything else deter you from doing the will of God. And, and when I, and I'm going to be specific, uh, when it concerns this, uh, being uncomfortable for the will of God, okay. you know, if it's not comfortable or convenient. We got to learn how to learn to start getting uncomfortable and, and, and work through and do the work, the will of God, even though we're, when it's convenient and even if it's not comfortable for us, you know, we have to consider, we got to consider Paul and all that he suffered, consider Jesus, all that he suffered and understand that if we suffer with God, we're going to reign with him. And so I would say that put God first, that's the number one above all. And it's always been that, but now so more now, because we're going to need, we're going to need our discernment. We're going to need to be able to hear from God within within a moment's time and be able to hear from him clearly. Fasting has to become a lifestyle. It can't be just something the corporate church is doing. We have to be fasting three days out of the week as Christians. We need this to be to – be, because the devil is getting stronger. This homosexuality, all of this stuff, you know, drugs and alcohol, murder, this stuff ain't getting no less than what it always was. So for us to believe that we could stay – in the same place, we just have to put God first and live a lifestyle that calls for our spiritual man to be built. Uh, what you call the name of this show? To be lifted up. We got to lift it up. Power lift. Power lift. Yeah, yeah, power lift. Yeah, exactly. You know, this, we got to get this power lift. And that's mm-hmm. through prayer and putting God first. That is the power lift. Amen. Amen. That is that is so awesome. Now, let me go off um, this limit. Um, Let's, what did you do in, in high school? Did you play sports? Did you do anything, anything else? Was your basketball? I play, well, I play, I'm, a, I'm athletic, so I play anything that that you show me the rules to, I can play. I don't care if I'm on skates, surfing, whatever it is, I'll do it. Okay, I got you. I got you. So what was your favorite sport? I like football and basketball. I mean, football and basketball were alternative in season. So I like I liked football because of the aggression. And you know, as you know, it was just like, okay, if I get mad at you, or you do something to get me mad, it, there's no really no need for me to really worry because you're about to get it back. You know what I'm saying? It was immediate. <laughs> it was immediate revenge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> basketball. I, I like basketball because it was graceful, and you could really, you could just finesse people and just do it, do it in a smooth, cool way. I like that about basketball. And I okay. like, and I box. I box, and it was just okay. boxing was okay. something that. Learn me to, taught me to be disciplined and honorable in battle. You know what I'm saying? And that's I, like I got that. you. Cool, cool. Okay, that's cool. So, who's your favorite team right now in in in, in football, in the NFL? Yeah, I'm with the Giants. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I got you. I got I, you. you probably. Where you at, Philly? Where you at? What you doing? No, I'm 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 in Dallas, but no, I ain't oh, no Cowboys fan. Mm-hmm. No, 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 sir, no, sir. Oh, you're not. Cowboy fan. <laughs> I'm rooting I'm rooting for the Forty Nine of that. Okay, oh, okay. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say them Dallas, them Cowboys fans are they they off the chain. Yeah, they off the <laughs> chain, Doc. Yeah, I ain't won nothing in 27 years, but they still holly the Super Bowl. But anyway, yeah, but anyway. yeah. Well, Lady K, do you have anything else to say? I just want to let you know, uh, King J, you got two new fans right here. Can I have them freestyle? Amen. You want to have me freestyle? Okay, yeah. like, like, uh, oh, you want to? Okay, she wants to hear some freestyle. Give us a, like like eight balls freestyle, whatever you have. Let's go ahead. I'm, now I'm gonna give you some, but it's let me see. <clears throat> whatever, whatever. Um, this ain't religion. This a lifestyle. Crack your Bible and apply it to your life now. Jesus Christ came through and laid his life down. I thank him and praise him. That's why I can't put the mic down. 
You ain't know. I'm going to show you how the holy road. Keep them in your heart and take them anywhere you got to go. They try to pass me a drink and try to pass me some smoke. Oh, boy, here we go, baby boy, I got to go. Hell is hot, so I gave the devil the cold shoulder. Fighting demons got me feeling like I'm bipolar. In the spirit, so you know your boy a holy roller. Smooth demeanor, so I'm rolling like a baby scroller. Godly composer personified in the Christ persona. In the name of Jesus, these demons flee like Daytona. These the good times, no Thelma and no Malona. I'm fighting temptation at the same time, lifting the load up. Hold up, I'm multiplying with no division. In addition, I'm living life, subtracting, sinning. Listen, that's just a fraction of what I'm spitting. To be specific, I'm living my life in the spirit. I got to mention he's the reason for these holy lyrics. Spiritual combustion propels me into holy living. Put on the armor of God and carry out the great commission. Satan need permission. Even then he can't distort the vision. Stop looking, listen and pay attention to every sentence. Seeking repentance is my business to pay the laws of visit. Crucifying the flesh. Every day I got to kill it because the devil's on my back every second every minute. I ain't Popeye so I'm gonna need more than a can of spinach. Love, peace and joy. <laughs> to the Lord's image. This is nothing like a gimmick. I don't think you cats get it. He died on the cross when he did your boy was acquitted. Hold up. I ain't finished. I'm living for Thanksgiving. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You empower my soul and my spirit. You clean me up from the streets with a purpose of great merit. God's general war on deck at war in the spirit. Yeah. That's what I'm they talking don't. about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Right. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Hey, you made my wife smile over here. <laughs> she was grooving to that. that, that That's smooth right there, my brother. That ain't is no, ain't no. With that being said, bro, I'm going to tell you right now. Add two more fans to your fan page or your fan book, okay? Reverend Red Thank and Lady you. K, we enjoyed your 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 story. We enjoyed your testimony. We enjoyed your energy. We enjoyed how you brought it tonight. I pray someone that was listening on tonight is blessed, equipped, edified. You know, with with just listening to you speak, the confidence which you speak with in the Lord. You know that alone, you know, should be encouraging to someone that's listening mm-hmm. on tonight. So, Lady K, anything you got to say? You good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm 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 full too. You you bless my soul today, my brother. Just want to let you know that. Right. Okay? You bless my yes, soul. So and we want to thank you. Go ahead. I'm on Instagram, so I mean, I mean, like I said, I get a prayer through. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I trust yeah. God. I believe God. I mean, I you know, pray for businesses, Amen. healing. You know what I'm Amen. saying? Multi- multiply, multiply income, anything. You know what I'm saying? God can, is great and he's above all. And he'll do anything we ask for him in, in, in faith. You know what I'm saying? We, we as children, we're living for him. You know, he's definitely going to make sure we're going to be satisfied with the fruit of the earth. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So with that being said, Lady K, I don't know what you're doing next Thursday. I'm going to be right here. At 8 p.m. Central. 9 p.m. Eastern. Same bat time. Same bat channel. With the same bat man. Jerry Ross Live. Join us on Power Lift. We want to thank God for our guests. We want to thank God for our listening audience. King J, we out, my boy. Love you, man. Be blessed. Thank you. Yes, sir. Our listening audience. Power Lift. All right. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Power Lift. Living in faithful truth. John 8 and 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Power to lift you up, power to set you free. We need a power lift, the truth will set you free. Living in faithful truth, receive the word you need. Power of the gospel ministries, preach the word indeed. We here to help each other, witness the truth and protect each other. So we set aside ourselves so we can reach each other. So let your worship cry, let your praise out. Now let the truth up in you, release that holy shout. You're listening to Jewish Live Worldwide Podcast.